Well, welcome, friends, to our Missions Monday here on uh, Tax Day. That doesn't have much to say about what you're interested in because every day is a great day to be able to talk about what we're going to talk about today. And we've got two special, amazing guests to help us out on this. We're going to be talking about missions, but we're going to be talking about it from the perspective of the uttermost parts in Acts 1-8. Why, why would the Lord Jesus Christ say, you know, I you are to be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem? And we could think of that. That could be the home front. Uh, Samaria, you know, that's a little bit further out. That's actually in the midst of a people group that people would not want to pay any attention to. That's what the Samaritans were to the Jews. And um, but the uttermost parts, is it a geographical location or is it something in the heart? And we'll get a chance to discuss that. So along with Pastor Schaller here with me is uh, Pastor Gary. And there he is. So we're going to talk about this. So, Father, thank you for this time. And, and we ask that you would just uh, your presence is what we desire and to have this be a reality to the viewers, whether they get it on the replay or they're getting it live right now. And we ask this in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. So Pastor Gary and Pastor Shalley, we've got uh, to discuss this idea of uttermost parts. And But you started off, Pastor Gary, talking about something in the heart. You know, you mentioned the word humility before we got started today mm -hmm. and in a missionary's heart. But let's let's not take it in the context of a missionary. Let's take it in the context of a believer. And so in his heart, if he's submitted and humble and and teachable, God is going to get one's eyes off of their locality and into the field we could say. Uh, not that the locality is not the field, but it's just an enlargement and an and expanse. And uh, Pastor Schaller, we were talking a little bit beforehand how this is, this is our DNA. I mean, as a, as a local church, we have seen over the decades, over the decades, yeah, people go and plant ministries, plant churches, and raise up locals and nationals, and they go, and they do the same thing. And, and you know, we say, how does that happen? Or, you know, but there's no hard formula, step one, step two, step three. But there are things that God does in the heart of his people, and maybe we can talk a little bit about that. That's what you were touching on, I think, with the idea of humility and and uh, patience being, being before God, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I can start with that. Like, <clears throat> there, it's, it's about people, and um, you can be afraid of people, uh, you can be shy, you can be timid, um, you can be, uh, you could say, like, uh, always like shaming yourself uh you, you could have all these kind of like your your characteristics around people <clears throat> but once the gospel uh the gospel uh the gospel has touched our hearts um where christ you have, you have a sense of your, your new life and you live in your new life the holy spirit is is teaching you, you have victories in, in, in the new man. Um, uh, you walk, you walk, you like progress. You don't just stay at one spot, but you progress in the grace of God. You, you, you have a sense of growing in the grace of God because in, in, in Romans chapter five, we stand in grace and uh, you have victories. And then you, you believe that this can be for other people. Hmm. And uh, you believe there's this super. You believe that the new birth is this is this miracle transformation where old things are gone, or have passed away, where they no longer exist, and and everything has become new. 
you know, as it says in Second Corinthians chapter five. So, uh, and then you start to relate to people like that. And I don't, this is a, and you start to see people like that and you want them to have an experience in the word of God. I think of lately, I've been thinking of the engrafted word where, where this word becomes a part of them, where the nature of God actually, or, or Christ is being formed inside of them. And uh, this is uh, a possibility wherever with whosoever. And uh, it's a message that the Holy Spirit wants to come out of our mouth and then he uses it in the air and then he lands it in people's hearts. Mm. The mystery how that happens, but uh, the, the Holy Spirit uses God's word through our mouths to land in people's hearts through the Holy Spirit and people believe this this yeah. natural process so i guess that's that's you know that's that's what when you can go you know to the uttermost parts of the world uh, you you have to think like that yes well because people would think that here's the difference of language culture and geographical issues and so those things don't hinder the gospel that's what you were saying and and when you see that, I think that the amazing thing about going, and it might just begin going locally. You know, we can talk a little bit about, um, you know, the things that we have in place, you know, the summer harvests that are coming up, um, just the, the purposeful local or regional or, you know, uh, targeting an area and going with a team and with others, then you witness the exact thing that you're talking about. And, and what it means is that your perspective of individuals changes. We, I want to see people the way God sees people, not the way my culture or my nationality or, or any of these things would categorize people. But if I could see people as souls and know that Jesus Christ came to seek and to save that which is lost. And every soul born naturally into this world is, is lost. So going that way and, and seeing the reality of uh, the work of grace and the work of the Holy Spirit too, this is amazing that I don't trust in my flesh. I don't trust in myself, but I can trust in God, the Holy Spirit, to do the work of salvation through grace. Amen. And, you know, so, Pastor Shalley, you you went to a, uh, a European country, nor well, Scandinavian country initially. And, um, you know, the idea, like, I'm sure that you were asked the question, like, why are you here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I don't, why is an American coming to the country of Finland? Yeah. Um, you know, maybe one of the things that we could talk about is um, the status of Christianity in the world. Um, and where are, in the uttermost parts of the world, where are those places where they don't know the gospel? Um, you know, Europe... I have some numbers here in the year 1900 in Europe, there was 70% of the population was Christian, but today it's 20%. So there's a huge decrease in Christianity in Europe. Uh, one fewer than one out of a thousand people are evangelicals mm. in Europe. Then here in the States, we see changes happening in North America. And then, um, you know, wh where you see growth is Africa, where the numbers have, like, increased radically. Let's see, we have, um, there were, in 1900, there were 8 million Christians in Africa. By the year 2000, there's 351 million 
So the that's an incredible increase from 8 million to 351 million. It's one of the fastest growing areas. Asia is another one. In Asia, in the year 1900, there was 22 million Christians. Today, there's 370 million. Well, that was by the year 2005. So uh, Christianity is no longer like a Western thing. It's expanding in Africa and in Asia. And, um, and when we think about the needs, we have like Pastor Mati in the Middle East with a team. And of course, uh, that is great interest to us. I was talking to Doug Pearson and Mike Punk at Saturday about their time in Vietnam and and how how the encouraged they are in regards to that put that country and our hope is that one day we could see people going to vietnam and into other in in the, the area ryan ryan is a pastor of a church in cambodia we have a couple of churches in thailand and i can't help but think that um when you talk to people who are Buddhists or Muslims, uh, when you think of people that are from a different culture than ours, and you tell them about Christ and the spirit working in their heart and the new birth, then you just say, think, well, like God is not, you know, God is caring. He is caring about people. And then our hope is that Europe would rediscover Christ and that they would people would know him and the hope and the message and here in the in the United States too. So laborers are needed. Uh, the gospel is happening. Uh, in our ministry, we're very encouraged by what Pastor Drew is discovering in the Philippines and what uh, Pastor Clyde is seeing and we have a CECON conference coming up in um, the beginning of October. So um, the miracle of the new birth, the miracle of being born from above, the miracle of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us and teaching us, and also um, the, the care that we, we need to have regarding world, world uh, evangelism and to have it in our hearts and to have it in our churches mm. that we would actually be believing that we should go to these parts of the world and, and share the message. Wow. Well, you know, the care part that you're talking about is, is uh, not a convenient care. It's not, I, I, you know, I can care for my family. I can care for my loved ones and I can care for the things that are in my life. But the picture is very clear for Jesus Christ and, and in John chapter four. So he's sitting at a well and here comes the Samaritan woman. And so there's two things there that would have easily prevented the conversation from going forward. One was that she was a woman. Secondly, that she was a Samaritan and that the Jews and the Samaritans had no dealings. And this is, this is the kind of uh, narrative on the on in people's minds or in people's cultures, but as you were mentioning, so Doug Pearson and so Vietnam. You know, I was I was thinking recently how <clears throat> back in in my generation in my day, I, I could have been in Vietnam with a gun. You know, I mean, and that's like crazy. But now I can think about being in Vietnam with the Bible, and that's amazing that it could be. That way that we could not go and be destructive, but go and reveal Christ and and redemption and uh, be ministering probably to the grandkids of those who we would have fought, you know, in mm -hmm. that war. Mm -hmm. But none of that stops anything from happening. Um, it is it is like you were saying, the, the field is wide open and, and we want to think like that. You know, Lord, help us to think with you about about the lost and have a, a care that will carry us there and get us there. 
And so um, we should talk a little bit, I think, about some of the outreaches. You touched on some as far as the SEA, Southeast Asia Conference. But uh, Pastor Gary, maybe you can outline a couple of the um, things that are up and coming and maybe share some some target areas and some dates with us. Okay. Um, yeah, I maybe I don't know the dates exactly, but right. by the beginning of October is SECON. Okay, this is a uh, this is in uh, the Philippines, and this is the first time we're having SECON there. We should have people from uh, China, from Thailand. There's a possibility to have people from uh, uh, Laos uh, coming, uh, from South Korea coming, uh, possibly even uh, from Japan. So this is, uh, mm -hmm. and even India. So this is a, a time uh, you know, that we gather over there and we've seen, uh, we've heard of miraculous testimonies of, of salvations, of communities being saved, of, of how God's working in the Philippines. Pastor Wright does a, 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 a Bible class uh, every Tuesday over there uh, uh, online um, for over there. Um, and it also reaches Indonesia. We went to Indonesia last year. And also this year after, after uh, the SECON or before, uh, we're thinking about something in Malaysia. We have some contacts in Malaysia where we would like to meet. Uh, Pastor Mike Plunkett is uh, from Singapore. He's in Singapore there. And so, you know, these things are all kind of like coming together. Uh, and then uh, it seemed like there was something, yeah, something else uh, happening over there. Well, anyway, oh, then well, we have the, the Korean conference right. be happening in July this year in, in Seoul. So all these things are, are happening over there. Um, and, and Hanoi is a great, uh, uh, Pastor Doug wasn't there, but Hanoi is a great city. Uh, Chinese people can go there easily, or it's a place that they're kind of accepted and uh, or easy to get to also. And so um, he was in Ho Chi Minh City. So, you know, there's the thought of that, uh, you know, coupled with, with Laos there kind of in that area. Um, yeah, so those are things that are happening uh, this summer. We have Pastor, well, we have Pastor Cliff Vincent is in Indonesia now uh, with his wife. He has a team member there from Guangzhou. Uh, they're living in a, in a city called uh, Kupang in Indonesia. And so, uh, yeah, we, those are, you know, some of the things that are, you know, that are happening over there now. So um, I just want to think that, you know, you're saying, saying about care, you know, there's, there's the care for churches and, and the people in the churches, like the message, the pastor, the congregation, the welfare, uh, how people are adjusting to the spirit. Are they living in truth? Uh, are they loving each other? Um, are they serving each other? Um, uh, is, is there a sense of submitting to one to another? There's the care of the churches. There's the joy that the church might have. And then there's also the care of, of, of the lost, you know, these, these two things. And, um, you know, uh, it, maybe we're thinking about care of the lost today, but a lot of this happens from local churches, from mm. local churches, uh, being in an area, pastor drew what he's done in the Philippines, uh, in, uh, encouraging the churches there. Uh, that's how he's, he's, you know, God has led him to, you know, these places where there's, uh, you know, you, you, we could say mass salvations. Um, but we hear, we hear, uh, so many times we also hear of, uh, people need to hear the message. They need to hear the message of grace. They need to have like a full thought on how grace actually functions in their life. They need to maybe, uh, because legalism or hyper-spirituality or uh, is subjectivity is very, it's like kind of uh, the human way to have church. Hmm. 
there's a spiritual way to have church. And uh, when, when the care of the church is, is vital, um, the teaching in the church is, is vital so that the churches are, are actually healthy. So these are, these are things that, you know, we think of uh, when we think of, of churches and also um, age, uh, the age, like, you know, do we become familiar? Do we learn how to uh, live a Christian life or do we learn how to receive, continue to receive a life that's from God? Like these mm -hmm. things are, these things are important in churches. So those two things about care, when you said that word, I was thinking of that. And maybe to say one, or I, yeah, I just say this one word maybe is, it, I've been thinking, someone asked me today, like, how do I relate to people that are mean to me in, in general? And this is important in missions because when you go somewhere, they're not necessarily going to receive you. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, you're going to have to love them, and uh, and and there's this word patience. Patience is a, is is an amazing word. We think of the patience of God and how He's like waiting to be gracious to yes. us. He's wow. waiting for us to receive grace. And when we go to the uttermost parts of the world, if it's a you know if it's if it's a jungle community, if it's a you know, a city setting, if it's a college university, we're extremely patient with people. We're not reactionary. We're, we're, we're showing love. Uh, we're, 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 we're treating people. We're treating people in a, in a way that, that Christ would treat them. And I was thinking that when, when, Christ, when Christ was being accused, because he had so much patience, he didn't react. He could respond to his father. And he could have a word. So this patience, this patience in, in ministry is is vital that we never migrate away from God's patience in, in, in our ministry. That's so good. That's so good, Pastor Gary. Yeah. Could could I just share Absolutely. something, Pastor? Um, hey, by the way, you're amazing. <laughs> you're great. Pastor Gary, good word. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Um I'm, I'm reading about the the triumph of Christianity in history in the first couple hundred years. The paganism of the day, which dominated in the Roman Empire, um, was challenged by a monotheistic concept of God from the Jewish people and Zoroastrians, too, who had a monotheistic idea. Uh, so then the Christians uh, started to, um, uh, they were small in number, 65 million people in Ro Roman Empire and only some thousands of Christians in the beginning. But um, the Jews in the synagogues, you know, were like the forerunners and they kind of, uh, they were different from the pagans. And that's where Christianity went first to the synagogues. But in, in to, to make a long story short, um, and you can read, read this on your own, but I recommend it. But when there were plagues and, and people got sick in large numbers, the Christians were not afraid to die. The pagans would run away. Mm -hmm from the plague the best they could and save their lives. But the Christians would would do that too, I'm sure, but they would they wouldn't they were not afraid to die. They would care for the sick pagans. If the pagans survived and the Christians survived, the pagan would become a Christian because the the Christian cared. And then regarding the birth of babies, the pagans would kill the girls but the Christians would not. So the girls, eventually they were, the, the, the girls were born into Christian families. And when the pagan men needed a wife, they ended up with a Christian wife. <laughs> and the pagan man would become a Christian because, <laughs> because it was personal, because mm -hmm. the Christian God cared about them. The Christian God was compassionate was humble 
and serves. Our God serves us. The pagan gods don't serve people. The pagan gods were really detached from people and very much like people. They would eat and drink and they would cheat and lie and fornicate and be dishonest and so on and didn't care about people. But the Christian God did. So within a couple hundred years, the Roman Empire was predominantly more than 50 percent, they say. It's, it's very possible that it was that there were that many Christians in it. Mm. You know, millions, like more than 30 million. Um, and so when you say care, uh, when we are talking about caring about people, um, we're talking about not just going with a message and preaching a doctrinal message and people listening and saying, oh, that doctrine is better than my doctrine. Mm -hmm. And I'm convinced your doctrine is true. It's more that that it's relational. Mm. Do you care about me? Does wow. your God care about me? Wow. Does he answer prayer? Is he is he here with me? I have a sick child. Could he heal that child? Um, I'm lonely. Do, do, do you have a family? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a Christian family. You know, we we have we we are we are care about you. We care about you. We want to listen to you. We want to pray for you. We want to help you. We, if that is in our hearts, uh, the the potential for growth is phenomenal. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Beautiful. because people want want they have a need for a personal God. Amen. The, the patient factor, like you were saying, so. Here are these young girls who, in their particular culture, would have been murdered. And they're growing up in a household, and, and um, they become the missionaries to their yeah. future husbands, you know. Right. So it's generational, too. And I love what you were sharing last night about, uh, you know, the age brackets, uh, you know, in raising your family. And, mm. But the importance was that they would come to church. So yeah. from zero to four, you know, how would you characterize, uh, you know, the effort to get to church? It's work. It's like, oh, my gosh, where's the bottle? You know, all those. We've all been through that. OK. <laughs> and uh, but the emphasis was that it was worth it, not not to get to the building, but to get to the body. And then other people got involved in our children's lives, you know, uh, and that that was a wealth that they took with them and they have with them. Um, and it's one of the things that, uh, you know, is on our questionnaire. So how do I spread the vision of team or, or the vision of the church? And I think, Pastor Gary, what you were saying was that uh, it's important that we have the right message and missions could be the right means but the the importance here is are we there for the long term it's it's like it's like a marriage you know when you when you're not looking to get something from this relationship only but you're looking to give and that giving very often is unconditional and so you know like you were mentioning about being patient and how do you how do you handle people who don't like you well you know i i'm not commanded by the scriptures to like people but i am commanded to love you and that love can't be based on conditional circumstances or that i i have i'm an easygoing kind of guy but it's something that god is doing in my heart and and I, I, you know, like I have a purpose in, in loving you because I know how it's changed me. And I know that that's the very thing that will change them as well over time. Yeah. Yeah. I guess in this in the spirit, actually, it's it's easier to love somebody than to like them. <laughs> <laughs> Liking people is like, you know, it's kind of subjective. It is. You, you, you're looking for the the right response and the right initiation. But when you love someone, 
you're not you're not looking for the the perfect response back you're looking for an initiation from god and you accept whatever whatever comes back you accept and then you you readjust again yes. so um you have a lot of adjustments like that in ministry and love love has a lot of adjustments whereas like it it's it's you know it's one dimensional and uh, it creates a lot of enemies and a lot of foes and a lot of arguments you don't maybe need to have whereas love you know uh, you know the more you love as paul discovered the less he's loved um it's 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 often misunderstood but god's always behind love mm. and he always shows us uh, a way to love and so you know we're we're scrambling to discover love for a person like when we're rejected like your message the other week pastor Schaller, you know when we grow well you know we we, we get to find forgiveness for people and uh, we get to stay in this in this battle um because uh we get to discover god's personal as pastor Schaller was saying there is the personal provision for another person hmm. Well, okay. Sure. Those are things that, uh, you know, that's in the aspect of caring, caring for people. We don't like people. We love people. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. And the love is unconditional. Meaning, did I lose you, know, you? You did for a second, but you're back. But there must be a, a delay. You're back. <laughs> so here's Jesus Christ on the cross. Oh, he did? Okay. And, um, you know, from the cross, he's saying, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. You know, he could have been silent mm -hmm. and be totally, you know, like mm -hmm. on point. But there was that that amazing, you know, release of love and not expecting anything in return. Not going to, you're not going to get it from your enemies, you know. But mm -hmm. then Jesus said, love your enemies what you know like that can't be subjective that's got to be objective mm -hmm. and it's got to be based on the fact that point point taken i was the enemy of god and mm -hmm. while i was yet the enemy of god that's when christ loved me so there's a there's an example of how that kind of love is what's going to change people's hearts mm-hmm mm-hmm no, you you um, have um, your church in Havity Grace, and mm -hmm. do you have like a missions plan there in the church, or um, how do you see world missions, Pastor? Well, it's connected. We actually we start locally, so we we have done some missions outreach up in uh, Oxford, Pennsylvania. And we've been there three times. In fact, we're going to go this coming Saturday oh. and just take a group, you know, and do what we do down here. Yeah. You know, and um, and we're keeping this um, the CECON and the international vision. Uh, you know, we're getting pictures and we're putting, you know, so people can begin to pray and begin to enter in that way. And. And, you know, God God could lead anyone to want to go mm -hmm. because it becomes something very tangible, something very real. You know, it, it becomes a new normal to be able to think this way. Yeah. And that's that's very powerful. That's very. So if, if somebody is the pastor of a church, well, it could be small, but but we have the heart and the vision and maybe the opportunity. But in any case, we can pray mm -hmm. and and be available, and then then it would be great for some some young person or to get some training, and then maybe they they would be sent out and uh, do mission work abroad. I really believe in uh, what does that sound? That's my phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so I really believe that. It's um, it, if if somebody has the heart, mm. they're available to God and just pray to God and say, "Send me." 
that he will. Okay. You know, yeah. That he will. That he that it needs to be done in um and that that Jesus said that we should pray to the Lord of the harvest. So imagine if every local church could could train people in the word, could train them in faith, and then they would be praying for sending and that not just anybody goes but people that are prepared and trained mm -hmm. wow what a great thing that is to bring the gospel to the third world hey right, yeah. pastor gary do you think like we should do that <laughs> do yeah. it more he might say what yeah he, yeah yeah i i, I as you're saying it, yeah, I'm thinking like, uh, I hope it resonates in people's hearts, you know, uh, don't, not excluding me, but uh, I, you, you, because so much has happened in, in you know, in our lives, in missions, and in, in going and in ministering, and, uh, you know, in church life, and, you know, starting a church. So, uh, yeah, and people discover uh, their gifts. Uh, they're trained. You're trained in, in, uh, in, in Bible school, and uh, you have a ministry here, and you say, God, send me. And uh, you'd be surprised at uh, how God gifts you Yes. When, once you go. Um, yes, yes. And you know the interesting thing is being around those who who go. You know, it's mm -hmm. not like I'm just going to strike out and go uptown or or down here. But the, the team concept is not. You know, Jesus had his twelve. You know, and the fundamental thing about doing doing missions or doing any ministry, doing it together as a as a team and as a body and. And then that's what people come in contact with. You know, they they don't come, they may come in contact with the pastor and the, or a couple of member individual members, but then they see this body of believers who are functioning, and who who why are you here together? Why are you you know you going out? Why are you evangelizing? Why are you ministering? And it gets back to the care factor, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that. It's not just one person that cares. It's like four or five or however, whatever the size of the team is. Yeah. But we have great unity in that and great purpose. Yeah. You know, uh, if I was a young guy and I came into a church and they are talking about it and they are praying for, let's say, a people group in Asia, you know, like like we're we're praying and and maybe you would like to uh, go to Bible school and get some training and go there and we will send you and that that's a vision that's a mission mm -hmm. but if I'm a young guy and I come into a church and we we don't we don't have that vision maybe our vision is to mow the grass in front of the building or paint the steeple of the church or maybe maybe have a good potluck supper or something it's not enough mm. for some young guys that are just saying you know i'm going to go in the i guess i'll go in the military i might learn how to fly a helicopter or i might know how to shoot a machine gun like the, there are young guys that are dying because there's no mission wow. there's no mission so i feel that uh God is saying, I am real. I give you a mission. Go into all the world, preach the gospel. And if that was presented, you know, like every once in a while in a local church and and we're praying and we're, like you said, Pastor, we're talking about it. We're gathering together. We're talking and we're thinking about it. And I think that's very healthy. And then you have somebody on the field and then they they may be out there for 10 years and then come back. Mm. But they're very much experienced and, uh, you know, they, they, they've they seen something. It's like the best kept secret in the world <laughs> is that you can go somewhere. And if you go for Christ and if you preach the gospel, you will doubtless come back wow. bringing your sheaves with you. You know, we believe this 
and and we have done it we are doing it and we we actually would you know love to see more of it happen so you want to mention something pastor about the summer like i i talked about hanoi the other day with mike plunkett and doug pearson and i don't know that sounds to me like um that's something that we should be praying and thinking about. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we, we could do something like that. I mean, we have, uh, a, I know we have a contact there. Uh, I'm sure Pastor Mike and Pastor Doug knows of people. Um, the church from up north could come down. Uh, uh, people... I mean, maybe that's a, a place to go. We had a great summer uh, harvest there one year before Pastor Doug went in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, we met a lot of people. Uh, the country, you know, it, it officially it's closed, but uh, there's loopholes to that, uh, obviously, in, in the ministry there. Uh, I even think Hanoi might be a bit more open, uh, just legally or uh you know government may close their eyes a little bit more there um so there are there are ways to you know uh, pastor doug had an english school uh there there are definitely ways to minister there so yeah. uh, we could do we could do something like that this summer now we could pray about it maybe mm -hmm. have a two-week english school in the summer wow you know two weeks and maybe get a team together and uh, i mean it was something to pray for okay yeah yeah praise yeah. the lord we got a lot going on yeah i mean uh if we could keep ourselves in the lord and in faith and build up and then work locally like you said oxford pennsylvania or canada mm -hmm. no <laughs> pennsylvania yeah, yeah. and then you know our local work and then than to the regions beyond mm -hmm. and um what if the lord returns and he finds us laboring wow, in the yeah. field that's a great thing that's a great thing yeah <laughs> yes he said that and you know the idea that um you 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 kind of touched on it because maybe maybe somebody's thinking that missions is it's about feeding people or digging wells, drinking water. I remember we were coming back from uh, from Africa, and there was a guy from uh, Notre Dame Seminary mm -hmm. who was also on a coming back from a missions trip. You know, we kind of like, oh, really? Wow, you know, that was great. And I asked him, so what did you? So what did you do while you were on the field? And he said, uh, oh, we talked about um, you know clean water and you know, we went to the village and set up, you know, uh, you know that kind of situation. And he, so he says, well, what did you do? I said, well, we, we evangelized every day. We talked to people about Jesus Christ. And, and I could see in his eyes, like he said, you know, like, I would love to do that. Oh. Yeah. You know, like yeah. that. Why couldn't we do that, you yeah. know, as opposed to just the logistical thing, which is important. Yeah. But. If you just did the logistical thing and never really got around to wanting, having a vision to plant a church, not just visit, you know, but mm -hmm. the long-term patient, you know, we're, we're coming to stay. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the care factor because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure that they, many, many individuals have sensed somebody has come, they did something and then they went back home. And, and that, that's a phase. But when you come and you're wanting to plant a church or do it, and then the church has a Bible school, is is willing to train up locals and train up nationals. That is, that's another factor that is very important because we're saying we're not the game. We're not the game in town. You guys are, mm -hmm. and you know you hand that off to them, and it's amazing that can that can happen. It has happened. We've seen it. You know. And that's very precious. Any closing thoughts, uh, Pastor Gary? Uh, I'm stirred up from talking today. Yeah, me too. Yeah, thank you guys. Um, this is super, super encouraging. I uh, just, you know, just it's it's interesting that we, you know, we don't build the, you know, the uh, the wells and you know do that ecumenical thing. But 
it's kind of neat that we are involved with men's souls and we mm. preach the word and we we have that mystical side of our ministry and it's we kind of know a way to make it quantitative you know before god you know relating to god and uh it's it's kind of neat that we've learned how to minister in that way and actually see the value the value in that mm. yeah you know if um we were lost one time mm. we were we were lost and somebody you know there have been a lot of nice people in our lives and uh teachers and coaches and a lot of nice people but nobody gave the gospel wow. and then there was some time in your life when a unique person had the courage uh the faith the prayer the love to tell us about christ to say you must you must realize who he is think about it and then decide do you want him in your life or not mm -hmm. Like, do you want Jesus in your life? He will save you. You will be regenerated. You'll be forgiven of your sin. God will call you by name. Wow. This is real. So just imagine mission work happening without that happening. Without that happening, it's like, that's not good. They, 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 we need to bring the gospel. So listen to Billy Graham. Go to classic, classic man. Billy Graham classics or Billy Graham uh, archives and listen to his message like one every once in a while. He's an evangelist. He makes it clear. That's the message. Not only the missionaries abroad, but missionaries right here in our country mm -hmm. and our churches and our people need to be bringing that message to people on a consistent basis. And you will find somebody that will come to Christ and they will love it. Mm -hmm. They will say, thank you so much. They will love it. And Jesus will open heaven to them and they will have yeah. a new life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank yeah. you, Lord. <laughs> Thanks, Pastor. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pastor Gary. And yeah, thank you. Thank you for all of our audience that's watching and uh, take it to heart. Stay tuned. This summer is going to be a great summer. And so stay stay tuned, stay in touch, because it's really going to be a great, great summer this summer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Pastor. Yeah.